Well, the system has chosen. The system has chosen Dome to succeed Joe Biden as president of the United States of America. And let me, let me pause on this for a moment before we go any further into this special. Don't, for a second, make the mistake of thinking she can't possibly win. I know she's horrible. I know she's unlikable. I know I understand all that. We're going to make fun of her. We'll talk about her at length, her record, her personality, her past. We'll talk about all these things. But I see a lot of cocky on the right right now. Trump survives an assassination attempt. Trump's up in the polls. Dome is unpopular. I see a lot of preemptive celebrating right now. This woman can be the next president of the United States of America. That's a possibility. And look, obviously, as you know, if you follow this show or anything for any length of time, you know that I've been talking about Dome for quite some time. Are you surprised to learn that Kamala Harris, if that's what she's going by, is like the worst boss in Washington and nasty to the people who work for her? It's the most predictable thing in the world, Tucker. Everybody watching you right now has worked for or worked yeah. with somebody who just has ambition just dripping off of their pores. And that's Kamala that's right. Harris. Those types of people will do anything to get ahead. They treat their bosses like crap. They treat their employees like crap. That's why she knifed Joe Biden in the debate with all that race nonsense. There was no need to do yeah. that. It's exactly. the same reason she cackles like a dead hyena every time she's asked an uncomfortable question. It's the same reason she started out her political career as Willie Brown's bratwurst bun. Kamala Harris will do anything to get ahead. Now, what was I saying there beyond the obvious inappropriate jokes? You cannot understand this woman and her belief system until you understand she doesn't have one. She is, I've made the half joke many times, but I'm not really joking. She should write a book, a biography, and title it Naked Ambition, because that's what she is. She is only ambition. Why did she start her career in that way? Dating the married power broker in San Francisco who was twice her age. Why would you do something like that? Because she was ambitious and he helped start her career. And then she runs for office and she runs as being you know, tougher on crime than the current DA. So not some loony commie. She goes right from there, works her way up through the California system, becomes the Attorney General of the state of California. As Attorney General, she took marijuana users and threw them in prison in mass. She, this is something she did in mass. Well, fast forward a couple years later, she's running as Joe Biden's Vice President. She's joking about all the weed she used to smoke, which of course was a lie. She went from being the tough on crime DA to being voted as the most liberal senator in the United States Senate, that includes admitted socialist Bernie Sanders. What are you seeing here? Are you seeing the picture of some committed radical? No, she's actually worse than that. You're seeing the picture of somebody who will say and do anything to get to the next job. That's her entire life is the next job. I've said it before. If Kamala Harris somehow, if you, could, if you could teleport her out of the White House and put her in a, a, a county in rural Wyoming, Kamala Harris would all of a sudden be running as a Republican far to the right of me, and she would do so without the tiniest bit of hesitation. This is a human being with no belief system at all, and I realize you could say that about a lot of politicians. Hers, you can take it to an extreme. There is nothing there besides ambition. And because of that, this is not a, someone with, again, a central belief system. She hasn't done a bunch of reading on what she believes about government and various other things. She hasn't been studying it. She doesn't sit around pondering it because all that matters to her is the next promotion. She finds herself as vice president of the United States and now about to be the Democrat nominee for the presidency of the United States. And that is why this woman nervous laughs all the time. I have been fortunate and blessed to, during the course of being vice president, have many situations where it becomes clear to me that there are 
you know, people of every age and, and gender, by the way, who see something about being the first that lets them know they don't need to be um, limited by other people's limited um, understanding of who can do what. So you're right. We have a lot of accomplishments. And I think what the American people want most in their leaders is that we actually get things done. And we have done it. We haven't taken adequate credit for it, frankly. But the brilliance of this inaugural class and its leaders is the ability to see what can be, unburdened by what has been, and then to make it real. Well, as I said, they, we have to revitalize the Palestinian Authority. And let us all agree, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do with her body. Anyone who is 18 today, they were born in 2005. Indeed, yes, wow. <laughs> Innovation is about our ability to see what can be unburdened by what has been. Well, the press is here. <laughs> I got some words. I got the vocabulary. And my pronunciation is perfect. <laughs> I love Venn diagrams. <laughs> I really do. The three circles, you know, and then they overlap. And so I, Venn diagrams can help Are you, you sort person, through. I'm, like... I'm just kind of an undercover geek. <laughs> There's just nothing there. No belief system, no founding, no principles, no nothing. Just somebody completely unmoored by any of that will say and do whatever she has to do in order to get ahead. And you've probably worked with someone like this in your life before. Maybe you're working with someone like this now. I hope not. Maybe it's a boss. Maybe it's an underling. But they're always the worst people to work for. Can't trust anything they say, anything they do. You understand that working for the vice president, if you're in politics, is one of those prestigious positions that you kill for because it looks so good on your resume. Kamala Harris has lost 92% of her staff in the first three years. Even ruthlessly ambitious little commie Democrat staffers can't stand to be around her for any length of time. That's who this woman is and gear yourself up for the dome slobber fest from the media. It's already well underway. Wow. Uh, I, you know, there was a twinkle in her eye. There was a kick in her step that, you know, when you're vice president, you know, I don't, you're not loose. You can't, you know, there's somebody above you. There's somebody you don't want to overshadow them. You want, And this was quite the coming out. And I got chills. I was blown away. I was like, I kind of fell in love with her. I, I thought she was smart, engaging. She's funny, feisty, twinkle in your eye, punch you in the gut. I mean, everything you kind of want. And I just thought it was a great, great opening act. Gosh, how embarrassing. And of course, they're going to lie about her extensively. You know this. Everyone remembers when Joe Biden promptly dumped the responsibility of the border on her lap and he dropped it on her lap and on camera. The vice president's agreed among the multiple other things I've had in a meeting and I appreciate it, uh, agreed to um, uh, lead our diplomatic effort and work with those nations to accept re the returnees and enhance migration enforcement at their borders. It's not her full responsibility and job, but she's leading the effort because I think the best thing to do is to put someone who, when he or she speaks, they don't have to wonder about, is that where the president is? When she speaks, she speaks for me, doesn't have to check with me. She knows what she's doing, and I hope we can move this along. But, so, Madam Vice President, thank you. I gave you a tough job, and you're, you're smiling. <laughs> but there's no one better capable of trying to organize this. Place. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and for having the confidence in me, and there's no question that this is a challenging situation.